Joy Lab. Hi, I'm Tanya. We had a potluck on Sunday at church and it was a baked potato bar and my job was the baked potatoes. So I bought big old bags, three big old bags of potatoes and baked them in the church oven. And it was very fun, but we had lots of potatoes left over. So today I'm going to show you how to make a freezer meal out of leftover baked potatoes. We're going to make twice baked potatoes. We have the potatoes, of course, uh, the cheddar cheese, some bacon, and instead of sour cream, this time I'm trying some Greek yogurt. This is plain, non-fat Greek yogurt, so we'll see how that works out. And I have my green onions. You may notice there's a little bit of uh, ice uh, on these green onions. This is one of my garden from the past, and I chopped them all up and froze them, and I get to use them now for a different freezer meal. One, two, three, four, five potatoes left over, and I've sliced them in half. I'm going to carve out the center, and you want to give yourself some of the potato left. Otherwise, if they're too thin, it will be too hard to, um, they won't hold the stuff. Twice baked potatoes are pretty much fancy mashed potatoes in a potato boat. I could make potato skins with this. I'd have to bake this to give it crisp and then put the cheese and the bacon in it. But I'm going to uh, add the potatoes so that we make twice baked potatoes. These potatoes are cold, so that's one of the benefits of using leftovers for freezer meals. Uh, you don't have to worry about burning your hand on hot potatoes. See how I left some of the potato in there? I think that one's the best one. Yeah, that's the most perfect one. Now the recipe calls for three medium potatoes. I have five potatoes. Are they medium? Who knows? So I'm just going to kind of make up the um, amounts of ingredients. They gave their guideline in the recipe and I'll just do what I think looks good. So I have these chunks of baked potato. I need to smash them down a bit. If I had a hand mixer, that might be easier, except then it splatters. So you just have to knuckle down, knuckle down, ha, ha and do it by hand. <laughs> and if the potatoes have chunks in them, that makes people believe that they're real potatoes and not fake mashed potatoes. From a box. Okay, I've broken them down a little bit. Now I will add... Well, I know I like cheese, so I'm going to go ahead and put the full amount of cheddar cheese. Your family may want Swiss cheese, or Mexican cheese, or no cheese at all. Maybe you're a dairy-free family. It's up to you. Alright, it looks like I may need a lot of this yogurt to make it nice and creamy. If your family is a dairy-free family, instead of yogurt, uh, chicken broth. Chicken broth actually would work. Oh, wow, I guessed pretty well. That's a nice consistency. Bacon, I don't know how much to put on. In fact, the recipe didn't even call for bacon, but our family likes bacon. Maybe your family likes ham or chicken or even uh, chili beans might be good in this. So I made five pieces of bacon because I had five potatoes. I'm not quite sure how much I'll put in. I'll just have to estimate.
All right, that was two. Let me stir it and see. It's feeling a little dry. I'm going to add more of our yogurt. Again, uh, the recipe has measurements for the ingredients, but because potatoes come in so many different sizes, and I have five potatoes instead of three, I'm just estimating. What do you say? One more piece of bacon? I say yes. I think that's pretty good. Now I have a picky eater in my house and maybe you do too so I am not going to mix the green onions in with the potato mix. I'm just going to put them on top. So I have to have 10 potatoes here and I'll just have to kind of estimate. I'll put a little bit in each and then I'll come back and if I have extra I'll put more. So I'm just filling the little shell, little potato boat with what has become fancy mashed potatoes. Whoa, I'm going to have exactly the right amount. I'm good. Pretty perfect. All right, so the green onions, I'm just going to shove some on top. Ooh, that's too much. They'll give a nice bit of color, a nice bit of flavor, and my picky eater can just pick them off. Looks good. I'll do some salt and pepper. Aren't these cute? We took baked potatoes, which had gotten boring, and changed them over into something that can go in the freezer, and I can pull them out whenever I want something a little bit fancier for dinner, and my whole family will enjoy this. What are you going to put in your twice-baked potatoes? Let us know below what kind of meat, what kind of cheese, what kind of seasonings, or maybe you have picky eaters and you would skip the seasonings altogether. My potatoes are frozen. I just set them in the freezer just like this and they're nice and hard and ready to be put in a Ziploc bag. I've labeled it. Nice hard potatoes, but look. First, what did I find at the grocery store tonight? Now this isn't quite what we made. We made twice baked potatoes. These are loaded potato skins, so it's almost the same thing. So you take the insides, and instead of mashing them to make mashed potatoes and put back in like we did, you um, fill them with cheddar and baking bits. So let's compare what we made with what you can get in the freezer section of the grocery store. Look at them, they're so cute. And then our big substantial potatoes. These aren't bad, they're just different. They're smaller and you get fewer. And you saw how quickly we made these, our own potatoes. My name is Tanya. If you want more information about freezer meals, click on the link below. Bye-bye. Joy Lab. Learning 
done right. Learn more with Joy Lab. Like, comment, share, subscribe. Visit us at joylab.biz.